let's draw a diagram of a longitudinal section in the left ventricle. This is the mitral valve, a cusp of the mitral valve, and here is the interventricular septum. This is a papillary muscle, left ventricular papillary muscle, septal, and this one is the posterior, and this should be the posterior cusp of the mitral valve. Papillary muscles are connected to the cusps of the mitral valve or the atrioventricular valves in general, whether mitral or the tricuspid, they are connected by fibrous cords called the cordy tendini. This section shows the condition of the mitral valve, the left atrioventricular valve during ventricular diastole. Blood passes from the left atrium into the left ventricle. Now let's draw a similar section of the left ventricle during ventricular systole. This is the posterior cusp of the mitral valve, posterior papillary muscle, septal or anterior papillary muscle, interventricular septum, anterior cusp of the mitral or the septal cusp of the mitral. And the cusps, you can see the cusps here are closed. This is during ventricular systole. What happens during ventricular systole is that the papillary muscles contract prior to contraction of the ventricle and this will result in tightening of the cordy tendini here again are the cordy tendini they are tightened right now this tightening of the cordy tendini results in drawing the cusps of the mitral valve together and this will prevent ventricular blood from passing back into the atrium at the time of ventricular contraction Thus, the cordy tendini prevent eversion of the cusps into the right or left atrium as ventricular pressure rises. This means that the competence of the atrioventricular valves, whether the mitral valve or the tricuspid valve, the process is an active process because it requires contraction of the papillary muscle and this results in tightening of the cordy tendini. So, it's an active process to to maintain the competence of these two valves, the atrioventricular valves. It should be kept in mind that the mitral cusps are smaller in area and thicker than those of the tricuspid valve and consequently are not ballooned back so much into the atrium during ventricular systole. The septal or the anterior cusp of the mitral valve in addition is thicker and more rigid than the posterior cusp. Now let's view these two cusps, the atrioventricular cusps, from another perspective. This is um, um, as if we are looking at the heart from above. This represents the fibrous skeleton of the heart. The fibrous skeleton consists in part of fibrous rings that surround the atrioventricular canals and the origins of the aorta and the pulmonary trunk. So these are the two atrioventricular canals, the right one and the left one. And here, uh, this is to show you the cusps of the tricuspid valve. This is on the right side. On the left side, the mitral valve with its two cusps. More anteriorly are the openings of the aortic valve and the pulmonary. These openings are also surrounded by fibrous rings. The function of these fibrous rings is that they keep the orifices of the atrioventricular and the seminunar valve. They keep them patent and prevent them from over distension. So this is another factor that keeps the competence of these valves. And the fibrous rings, they provide attachment for the leaflets of the cusps of the valves, whether the uh, seminunar cusps or the uh, cusps of the atrioventricular valves. And they uh, provide attachment for the um, myocardium. Of course, this is in addition to their um, an other function is that they act as an electrical insulator between the atria and ventricles so that the only way that the electrical impulse passes from the atrium to the ventricle is through the membranous part of the interventricular septum, which is another part of the skeleton of the heart. Now let's deal with the competence of the um, semilunar valves the pulmonary and the aortic valve. These valves are guarded by three semilunar cusps. In the pulmonary, uh, we have three cusps. So there is one posterior and two anterior cusps. In the aorta, again, there are three cusps, but there is one anterior and two posterior cusps. The cusps are cup-shaped. Let's look at the cusps from another view. 
and draw a section of an open aorta an aorta that has been cut vertically and opened so here are the three cusps these cusps as I said that they are cup shaped now let's take another look at these cusps from another view a longitudinal section at the beginning of the aorta at the site of the cusps and the section is showing two cusps and you can see here that opposite each valve the wall of the artery is slightly dilated to form a sinus and the blood in these sinuses prevents the cusps from sticking to the wall of the artery and failing to shut afterwards now the free edge of each cusp is thickened to form what we call a lunule so there's a thickening here in the free edge of the cusp in addition to that the apex of the angulated free edge contains a central fibrous nodule so this is a nodule and here is again another nodule and another nodule these nodules and the thickening of the lunule they assist in closing the central areas of the edges of the cusps now one more thing about these cusps the semilunar cusps is that in the aorta two of these cusps they have openings behind their sinuses and that is the anterior sinus and the left posterior sinus so the anterior aortic sinus provides origin of the right coronary artery and the left posterior provides origin of the left coronary artery returning back to the other drawings this is the origin of the coronary arteries from the coronary sinuses of the aorta anterior and left posterior coronary sinus and here again we can represent the origin of the coronary artery from the coronary sinus competence in these semilunar valves is a passive phenomena unlike that in the atrioventricular valves which require the contraction of papillary muscles here there are no papillary muscles during ventricular contraction the blood will pass through these um, valves through these uh, openings and will push the cusps of the valve away and the cusps will project into the artery close to its walls as the blood leaves the ventricle therefore but they do not stick into the wall because of the presence of the sinus and small amount of blood into the sinus and then during ventricular diastole and because of the elastic recoil of the wall of the great vessels the pulmonary artery and the aorta some of the blood will occupy the sinuses and the column of blood will therefore have a pressure on the cusps and will push the cusps closed it's at this time that to say during ventricular diastole and when the cusps are closed in the aortic valve then the blood will have a chance to pass through the openings of the coronary arteries and this is the perfect time for the perfusion of the ventricles when the ventricles are relaxed then the blood will flush the coronary circulation during ventricular contraction the cusps are open and um, pushed against the sinuses and the openings of the coronary vessels are closed and therefore perfusion of the ventricle will not take place during ventricular systole. this is the um, um, only place in the body where perfusion does not take place during ventricular contraction but during relaxation again I repeat that the theme here is that the competence of the valves of the atrioventricular valves is as an active phenomena by contraction of papillary muscles and tightening of the cordy tendony which prevent the prolapse of the cusps of the atrioventricular valves into the atria during ventricular contraction while the uh, competence of the semilunar valves is a passive phenomena and is produced by the closure of the cusps of these valves as the blood returns back uh, into the uh, ventricle it will push close these uh, cusps and prevent regurgitation